All right, what's up guys? In this video, we are going over the basics of Procreate, just by painting a simple, simple, simple sphere. So we're gonna learn the basics of some of the tools that I'll be using and uh, the basics of really painting and drawing a sphere, right? Procreate is an awesome, awesome, awesome digital painting app, but uh, some basic specs that I play this quick, time-lapse replay is uh, I'm using like an iPad 6 generation and I'm using a basic rubber tip stylus. So no like Apple Pencil, no pressure sensitivity. I don't need the pressure sensitivity for this. Um, I'm showing how to work around it. You could be using your finger if you want to be finger painting, right? Um, but I love Procreate for so, 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 so many reasons. And let's get into it. Let's, uh, let's learn a little bit. I'm on the home screen, it looks like this. I see some projects. I have a recent install of Procreate, so you can see some of the old demo projects and templates as well. In the top right of the screen, I press that plus button and I can choose from my sizes. If I wanna make a custom size, I can click that little black icon up there. But for now, let's use the screen size. Um, something to keep in mind with the screen size that is that it is at 72 pixels per inch, meaning it would print out a little bit smaller than you would think. Uh, but for our just learning, it's gonna work just fine. So Procreate, a few things. Up in the top right, we have our menus, right? Our little tools. This first tool is the layers tool or the layers panel. Procreate works a lot like many other digital media software like Photoshop, Illustrator, Vectorinator in the sense that it works with layers. So right now I've got a background color layer and then a layer one. Other tools or other panels, buttons that I see up here, that color wheel, um, I have the basics of picking my colors. I have some color schemes down there in the bottom. I just created a new color palette or a swatch. Um, we'll be using this, and we will also be using the brush tool and the smudge tool, which are these right here. Now, if I want to paint a sphere, which is what we're doing, right? I want to start with a circle, because a sphere in two dimensions, the shape is just a circle. Now, I don't know about you guys here. I'll grab my medium brush tool in the airbrushing panel right here. Um, so I'm in airbrushing, not like sketching or painting or anything like that, airbrushing and my medium brush. Now, I don't know about you guys, but drawing a perfect circle is hard. Uh, um, I press undo down in my bottom left corner of my screen. What's really cool is about a lot of digital media apps is that we have selection tools. So if I click on my selection tool, which is up here in the top left next to the arrow tool, I can grab my ellipse selection tool and I can draw an oval. So I'm still clicking and holding, right? Now, while I'm clicking and holding, before I let go, if I press down with a second finger, it creates a perfect circle and retains that to be a perfect circle. So I'm going to say, okay, that's good. I'm going to undo that just so you guys can see that again, right? Um, my selection tool, click and drag an ellipse, and in order to make that sure that ellipse is going to be a perfect circle, I press and hold with a second finger. Boom, there I go. Now. I can see what I have selection or selected because everything else are those like uh, gray and white lines. Those gray and white lines signify that it is not selected. I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to grab a local color. Local meaning that's the color that I'm just going to start with. Let's do uh, let's do like magenta. Um, now some other things that I have set right now. Over here on the left side, I have two little sliders. This is the brush size. I'm going to grab a decently big, so I'm filling up a big area. And this is the brush opacity. I'm gonna start with that at 100%, but I will drop it later. If you're using pressure sensitivity, that will change depending on how hard you're pressing down, but I'm not using pressure sensitivity just yet. So let's go ahead and just bam, brush that whole thing, and boom, I have a magenta circle. Now, I'm gonna click the arrow at the top left and I can move that around, I could rescale it if I wanted to, but in my layers panel, I'm gonna do something that's called alpha lock. Now that I have a circle painted, if I tap on that layer, and then I have a few options there, I can rename the layer, I could copy it, I could clear the layer. Sorry, camera froze up on me for a second there, that was weird. Um, we're back, anyway, so I'm in my layers panel, right? Uh, and if I click on alpha lock, what that does, I can see now that it's checked, right? What the alpha lock does is it will only let me paint on pixels that have already been painted on, meaning just that circle is all I can paint on. It's pretty cool, because that means that I can't accidentally paint outside of the circle, so it's always gonna be a perfect circle. So now let's grab our, uh, our brush tool again. I'm gonna drop my opacity, which is this bottom slider, down to a little under 50%. And this is gonna let me work in layers. It's gonna let me build up the digital paint. So let's go ahead and build a shadow. Now, if you've never painted a sphere before, here, let me pull up an image of a sphere with lighting on it, because we need to see a few things here, right? Um, you always want to look at references when you're painting from life or when you're painting from an object because memory, memories deceive us. So you can see I want to pick a highlight or a direction where the light's coming from. The, uh, in this photo, it's coming from the top left. Um, we see our 
shadow. We see that kind of core where that first like shadow really happens and it's all happening in this kind of rounded curve. I see the cast shadow, which is the shadow on the actual surface, right? And then I see a reflected shadow, which is like honestly like one of my favorite parts. Is that the darkest part of the sphere? It's not the bottom of the sphere, contrary to what uh, might be first instinct. So let's go back to procreate. Bada bing. So I'm making sure that I'm on my layer. I'm going to select my colors. For my shadow, I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit darker of a color. And what I like to do is I like to slide my color down to be a little bit cooler as well. I was once taught that one color is no color. And what that means is that we need to push ourselves a little bit around the color wheel further than just the local color. So I'm going to go ahead and say the light's coming from the top right. So I'm going to go ahead and in gentle, swift strokes, start painting that in. I might shrink up my brush a little bit. I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and grab a lighter color. So I'm going to bring in a lot more white and then push it into a little bit warmer of a magenta. For the highlight, I'm going to drop my uh, size a little bit, maybe drop my opacity a little bit more too, and paint in small little motions. It's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if it doesn't look good. I'm going to bring a little bit more white there. I've painted many spheres in my life now, whether you know on digital tools like Procreate or uh, with actual paint. If this is your first time, it might not look that good. It's okay. You just got to paint a few more. It's just practice, right? Um, so I'm going to grab my local color again and just paint a little bit more here. But let's start our blending process. So you notice that all my strokes are rounded because the sphere is round, and I'm kind of following the direction of the curve. So next tool that I'm going to grab is my smudge tool. It's that looks like that finger right next to the brush tool. If I click on it again, I could smudge with different kinds of brushes. You could smudge with one of the airbrushes. I like to have a little bit of texture, a little bit of painterly texture because it is resembling paint. So I'm gonna, in my painting brushes, I was using this one at the bottom called watercolor. Now, when you're smudging, the opacity is just how strong is it gonna push the digital paint around. I'm gonna use a brush that's not too big, not too small, about right there. And I'm gonna keep my opacity down a little bit. And now when I smudge, I can drag and push back and forth, but I'm not doing that. I don't want to go against the grain. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to smudge along the grain, make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm going to smudge along the grain. And we see that we begin to blend. Now, we don't want to smudge the, the bejesus out of it, right? We don't want to smudge all the life out of our sphere. I, I like, in fact, let's keep it a little bit painterly, right? Let's let's be okay with having a little bit of texture in our sphere. It makes it look a little bit more lifelike. You see I'm bringing some of that uh, brighter magenta color down into the base of it a little bit. The entire time kind of like curving the strokes in to the edge of my sphere right there, right? I don't want to smudge I, mean, I don't want to smudge too much. I don't want to over smudge because then I create a blurry sphere. And I don't like that. I don't, I don't, we don't like our spheres to be blurry. But it's already looking pretty good. If I want to, I can go ahead and grab my brush tool again. Um, grab like a darker color and start rebuilding a little bit. Um, so paint a little bit more on there. Smudge it in a little bit. Oh, I missed the smudge tool. <laughs> smudge it in a little bit. How am I doing for time? What was my time at? All right, all right. I'll finish up soon. Um, let's create some of that reflected light. Let's go ahead and, and bring our local color into the bottom of our sphere a little bit. Work that in there. I've got a pretty good looking sphere. For my cast shadow, let's, well first off, let's go ahead and change our background color. Our background color, we never want to be too intense, right? If I, I don't want my background color to be a really bright, vibrant color that distracts from my subject, which is the sphere. So for background color, I like to pick the complement. Uh, so the complement of magenta is that opposite. So let's go green. And then let's make it a much more neutral, neutral, pale version so it's not too distractive. Cool. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. Now, for my cast shadow, which is going to be the shadow on the surface, let's go ahead and make a new layer. It's OK if it's on the top right now. Eventually, I'll put it on the bottom. Let's grab my selection tool again. And I'm going to draw an ellipse. 
I'm gonna grab a dark color, but I'm not all the way black. I'm not painting a completely black shadow. It's gonna project a little bit of the color of the sphere and a little bit of the color of the surface. So I'm gonna use a little bit of a dark magenta, grab my medium brush and paint it up in a little, a few layers there. What I like to do with my uh, cast shadows is add a little bit of a layer of the opposite color just to neutralize it out. When we're, we're painting for real, you blend together opposite colors and they neutralize. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of green here, not too much, and just do a lower opacity quick layer over it. In fact, that's probably way too much. Yikes, 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 yikes. Okay, I'm gonna drop my opacity a little bit more and one more uh, bigger brush and okay, I'm more comfortable with that. So I'm going to grab my arrow tool. I'm going to turn off my selection. I'm going to grab my arrow tool. I'm going to drag it down to the bottom of my cast shadow, touch the bottom of my sphere. And then I'll drag my layer beneath my sphere. And I am looking pretty good. If you want to, you can smudge uh, a little bit of the edge of your shadow just so it doesn't look too artificial. I would recommend not smudging that too much. Gives us a little bit of texture there. And hey, there's the basics of painting a three-dimensional looking sphere in procreate um yeah i the more spheres you paint you see like i spent a lot of time blending this one up the more times you do this the better you're gonna get and i cannot stress that enough that just the more times you do it the better you're gonna get but that's it that's the basics of procreate thank you for watching